What is going on YouTube? Greetings from at sea on the beautiful Ruby Princess. We just pulled out of Costa Rica yesterday and are now heading to Mexico. I haven't been to Mexico in a few years, so I'm super excited to visit again, but that's not why you're here. You want to know what my monthly expenses were from a full-time traveler's perspective that is currently cruising. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So last month I did a video about what it costs me to live on a cruise ship for 30 days. You guys really enjoyed that video and asked if I could do monthly expense videos. I think that is a great idea. And from this point forward, I will do expense reports on every month of my full-time traveling, whether it's on a cruise ship, living for 30 days in a country like Thailand or Malaysia, or going back to van life and living in a van traveling across the United States, or any other way I travel. From now on, every single month, I'll do a monthly expense report so you can see how affordable it is to travel full-time no matter how you travel. So the month of March, this month, I traveled to a ton of places. We went to St. Kitts, Martinique, Guadalupe, Bonaire, Aruba, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, and we just finished transiting the Panama Canal and are now heading up the west coast of Central America, heading to California before going up the west coast of the United States and then over to Hawaii and then Alaska. And I don't say that to brag, I just want you to understand what this monthly cost included. All right, on to the expenses. The first one we'll talk about is the price it costs me to be on this cruise ship, which will label housing. Every month I'll have a housing expense, and when I'm cruising, cruising is my housing expense. So I wanna preface this by saying, you're gonna see three receipts that cover my entire month of March. You'll see what the cruise cost me. What you won't see in there is a cruise fare. All of these are casino deals. And in my last video, how much it cost me to live on a cruise ship for 30 days, I did a little excerpt, explained how I got the cruise deals. I will take a snippet out of that video and I'll put it at the end of this video. If you're curious on how I did that, I'll just throw that into that video. But you can also go to my previous video and learn about that. Additionally, a lot of you will probably have questions like, what about gratuities? What about stuff you spend on board? Well, I get onboard credit. I talked about that in the video. We just discussed how much it cost me to live on a cruise ship for 30 days. So you can go check that video out. I do a detailed explanation of onboard credit and how I use it to pay for certain expenses. I also have a video called how I find cheap cruises. Before I ever got cruise deals, I was, cruising pretty inexpensively, almost as cheap as I am with cruise deals because I knew how to find inexpensive cruises. So go back and watch that video if you're like, this is impossible for me because you're getting all those cruise deals. All right, so let's take a look at this receipt here. So you'll see that it covers part of February and then into March. So we'll have to prorate this receipt. So we're only gonna cover the days March 1st through March 8th. I know it ends on the 9th, but that isn't an actual day you pay for. We'll pick up the 9th on the next receipt. So we're talking about March 1st to March 8th, which is eight days. So you'll see here that this entire cruise costs $700. It was a 10 day cruise, so we'll divide 700 by 10 and we get $70 per day. Since we're only covering March 1st to March 8th, eight days, that's $560 for these eight days. All right, the next receipt covers March 9th through March 22nd. So that's all of March, so we don't have to do any dividing. You'll see that this cruise costs $371.62 for 14 days. I know that sounds super inexpensive, and it is, but usually Panama Canal cruises that go all the way through the canal are pretty inexpensive. Even though this is only taxes, port fees, and gratuities, usually you only pay a couple hundred dollars on top of that for a Panama Canal cruise that's a repositioning cruise. So that's why this one is so inexpensive. Okay, so the next receipt is from March 23rd until today, March 31st. You'll see that's $737.37, but it includes a few days out of March. So 
March 23rd through March 31st is 15 days. Oh, I'm sorry. The whole cruise was 15 days. March 23rd through March 31st is nine days. But we take this 737.37, that is the total cost of the cruise, and we divide it by 15 days. We get $49.16 a day. We take that times nine days, which is March 23rd through March 31st, and we get $442.44 for those nine days. We add all three of these cruise fares up, 560 plus 371 plus 442 dollars and 44 cents and we get 1374 dollars and six cents for lodging so that's what it cost me to stay on this cruise ship from march 1st to march 31st which is today so the next thing we're going to talk about here is dining out so normally on a cruise ship all your meals are covered on one day when we pulled in in fort lauderdale i decided to go out and get myself a cheeseburger and french fries. I had mentioned that I've lost a ton of weight on this cruise, over 25 pounds now, and my reward for hitting that 25 pound mark was I could go and get a hamburger and french fries at a fast food restaurant. So I chose five guys and yikes, it was almost $30 for a cheeseburger and fries. I feel like I can get a steak for $30. I feel like that was a complete waste of money, but it was my reward for losing all that weight. So next up is groceries. You'll see here it's $88.04. I spent that at Publix. I got some Fufu creamer. I bought four of them, creme brulee creamers, and I also bought those Mio water enhancers. I bought like 16 of them. That's why it's $88 and that'll probably last me the rest of the time I'm cruising the next couple of months. So you shouldn't see an expense like that next month. I don't really need to pay for groceries because I get all my food on board the cruise ship. Hey, just a quick break. My YouTube analytics tell me 70% of you are not subscribed. So if you're enjoying this video so far, want to see more of this type of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video so far, make sure you tap that thumbs up button. All right, back to the video. Next up is cell phone. So I pay $55 for a T-Mobile plan, and that includes international coverage, uh, United States, Mexico, and Canada. I have 5G everywhere I go, and anywhere else I have like 3G, which is okay. You can use Google Maps and things like that, but sometimes I need more high-speed data to do live streams and stuff like that. So I pay the $50 to get the international upgrade which gives me 5g in every country i go to so with taxes that was 108 dollars and 94 cents next up is insurance so i own a rental property i have umbrella insurance i use my mother's address but i have to keep a renter's insurance policy in order to get my other policies so i have renter's insurance and that comes to a grand total of 54 dollars and 32 cents i know some of you might ask well what about trip insurance what about emergency evacuation insurance so I use the Chase Sapphire reserve credit card to book all my cruises and all my travel so when you do that you have a bunch of different kinds of coverage one of them is trip insurance and the other one is like emergency medical stuff like evacuation if you're interested in the Chase Sapphire reserve card I love it I've talked about it in other videos there's a link down below you can go check that out but that's that covers those insurance expenses. Okay, the next item is healthcare. It's one a lot of people are concerned about. I'm very fortunate. I did 20 years in the military. And so when I retired, I got low cost TRICARE. I pay $15 a month, a little bit under actually, for my TRICARE. And when I was home, I went to a medical appointment and I had a copay that I just got charged for, which was $10.16. So I spent 24 99 on healthcare, so about 25 bucks this month. And I know a lot of you are saying, oh, I wish I had low cost healthcare insurance. You're so lucky to have that military insurance, and I am. I feel very fortunate. But go check out the YouTube channel, Grounded Life Finances. They have a whole video on their low cost insurance that they have. I think they pay about $250 a month. And so there is a way to get lower cost health insurance other than serving 20 years in the military. So go check out their channel if that's something that you're concerned about and is keeping you from traveling full time. 
All right, next up is entertainment cost. I'm on a cruise ship. I don't need entertainment. I have it at my fingertips here. I didn't mean I don't need it. I have it at my fingertips here. There are Broadway shows. There are mu magicians. There are comedians. There are music acts constantly on board. There's trivia, games, all kinds of things to do on board the cruise ship. Plus, every day or so, we pull into a new country, which is amazing, and I get to go explore that country. So I have zero entertainment costs. I've mentioned on here before that I have some streaming services. Right now, I have Max and Peacock, but I paid the annual fee for them, so they don't appear on here. I think it was something like $50 for each one of those. And those will ap appear on future expense reports when I have to pay them. I don't prorate those out because I pay it all at one time, but those are the two streaming services I have. And so you don't ask, that's why they don't appear on this expense report because I already paid them in another month. Okay, next up is shopping expense, and you'll see here, $8. I bought a coffee cup. I got all that creamer, that foo-foo creamer, to prevent me from paying $5 a coffee on board the cruise ship and save some of my onboard credit for other things, and I needed a cup. So when I was at Publix, I spent $8 on a coffee cup. It's a Mr. Coffee Cup. It's great. It's like ceramic. I love it, and that's my shopping expense. I haven't spent any more money on shopping. I've mentioned this a million times. I'm a minimalist. I travel carry on only. So I can't really shop that much because I don't have anywhere to put stuff. All right. The last expense on here is miscellaneous. And there are a ton of things on here included in this. I'll explain what they are so you know what those expenses were. And these are expenses that won't reoccur every single month. And they're just things that come up in life. So the first one was tax prep. I paid $300 for some tax prep stuff this month. The next one was Canva. I used Canva to do my thumbnails for my YouTube channel. And that's $14.99. The other one was a spending tracker. So you guys asked me to do these monthly expense reports and sometimes I pay cash and that's a little bit harder to track. So I got this little app called Spending Tracker and in order to get the ad-free version, I had to pay $2.99. It's not a reoccurring expense. It was $2.99 forever. The other thing I spent money on this month was Final Cut Pro for the iPad. This is another annual expense. It's $49.99, so 50 bucks for the year. So you won't see this one again until next March, but I edit all my videos on an iPad. I edited this video on an iPad and that costs $5 a month or you can pay $50 for the whole year and save yourself 10 bucks. So that's what I do. The last expense included in here is a monthly reoccurring expense. It's a 0.99 cents for iCloud. I'm sure a lot of you have Apple iCloud. I just pay for the, the cheapest one and it's 99 cents. All my other stuff I move over to little flashcards so I don't increase my iCloud expense. But I do have a little storage on there because I take so many videos with my iPhone. But it's only a buck, right? 12 bucks a year. I realized I forgot one expense, travel and transportation. It's zero. I guess you could say the cruise fare is included in travel and transportation, but it's just easier for me to roll that all up in the housing in future versions of this where I'm not traveling on a cruise ship, I'm living in a country for 30 days or in a van, you'll see more travel and transportation costs. But for this video, it's zero because it's all rolled up in my cruise fare, which is included in housing. All right, so let's do a quick recap here. We had $1,374 for housing, 29 bucks for dining out, 88 bucks for groceries, 109 bucks for cell phone, $54 for insurance, which includes my home, umbrella, and renter's insurance, healthcare, which is $25, travel and transportation zero, entertainment zero, shopping was eight bucks for my coffee cup, and miscellaneous was 368 bucks. Remember, I had that $300 tax prep that is kind of a big expense that you won't normally see, but even with that, my total was $2,000 and $55 for the month. Even if I didn't get cruise fare discounts, I'd probably add another thousand onto that. So I would have had a, a cruise month, 31 days for $3,000. In my case, I got the cruise uh, casino deal benefit. So this month cost me $2,055. What do you think about that? Do you think this kind of life is possible for you if you wanted to live it? 
like what expenses would you have to add to that that would drive up the cost or what expenses could you eliminate to lower the cost if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that thumbs up and 70 percent of you watching are not subscribed so if you liked it hit that subscribe button thanks for watching see you next video Okay, so I did a terrible job explaining that on my first take. So I figured I'd come down to the casino and tell you my casino story from the actual place it happened. So before I started my one year on a cruise ship, I took a trial cruise run actually on this ship. So you guys asked me to film some of the casino. So I came down to this, this very casino and I put $50 into a slot machine I subsequently lost that $50 pretty quickly. But at the end of the cruise, I got a little envelope slipped under my door that said, hey, on your next cruise, you have $150 free credit. So that mean, meant I could take $150 down the casino and put it into the slot machines. So this was December of 2022. Cruising was just starting back up again and they were trying to encourage people to go cruising. So I kind of got lucky in that respect. So I went to my next cruise with my $150. I went down the casino. I put that $150 in a slot machine and I won a little mini jackpot. It was like $1,200, somewhere around there. So I took my money, put it in my pocket, said, yay, gambling is great. I ran into the YouTubers para DJ on the cruise and they said, hey man, we cruise for free on Princess and Carnival because of free casino cruises. I know you got that $1,200, but you should consider putting it back in the casino and seeing if maybe you get some of these free cruise offers. So that's what I did. I ended up playing that entire jackpot in the casino. It took me a while to get through that, by the way. I was up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I racked up a bunch of casino points. And then at the end of the cruise, I got another envelope slipped under my door, this time for $200, $250 uh, casino credit. And I was like, well, that wasn't worth it. it cost me $1,300 to get that. About 10 days after my cruise, I got this email that said, hey, book a free inside cabin with us and get 150 or 250 onboard credit. I was like, oh, great. I got a free cruise out of it. So I went to book the cruise and... I went online and I saw all these cruises, every cruise under 21 days was $0 for an inside cabin. And I would have to pay the port fees taxes and gratuities as well as put down a $200 deposit. So I did that, I booked it. And then I went back into the search engine to book some more cruises and I saw that it was still $0. And I was like, what's going on here? So I went and read the fine print of the email and it said, every offer you get, you can book three cruises. And in the next month or so, I started getting all these casino deal offers and which with every one that I received, I was able to book another cruise. So once I got to the cruise ships and we're, and we're on those cruises, I was like, how, you know, how long is this gonna maintain? And so I was watching this channel called Cruising with Mark and he's, he was talking about how to maintain your free cruise eligibility and it was basically by gambling. So I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna play my free credit and anything I win with the free credit, cause when you play free credit, every time you win, it converts to real money. And I was like, I'll play my free credit and all my real money. And at the end of the cruise, whatever onboard credit I have left, I'll put in the casino. And sometimes that was two, $300. Princess lets you use your onboard credit in the casino. Some cruise lines don't, but Princess does. So that was my strategy. And I've kept that up, up till now. I always put my free play into the casino and anything I win from my free play. And then whatever onboard credit I have left, I play in the casino and that's kept me in the casino system. I don't know how long that's gonna last, but it's lasted for like nine, 10 months. So I'm still getting free cruises and I'm gonna take advantage of it as long as I can.